many of you are back in an uh, All-Ireland final? How does it feel? Um, brilliant. Um, we were there in 2017, 2018. Didn't get the results we wanted, but hopefully now this year, third time lucky, or as the saying goes. <laughs> How difficult is it to get to an All-Ireland final? Um, it's particularly different in, or difficult in Galway because it's so competitive. You have the likes of Mulya, Erdran, Thomas is this year, Air Course. Like, there's so many senior teams at a similar level, so it's hard to get there. So we never really think ahead until then and then obviously we don't have Munster Championship or Leinster Championship so we look forward to the semi-final which is always extremely tough as well so it's hard to sort of fill that gap from say in no middle of November to the end of January to keep fresh and play all the challenge matches and stuff like that but yeah it's tough to get there but yeah it's worth it. Galway is very competitive mm -hmm. for Camogie, why is it so? Um, I'm not really sure. It's probably just the culture in um, with the hurling as well. There's a long history of strong club teams coming from Galway and winning the club All Ireland in the hurling, and East and South Galway is especially. There's a lot of uh, there's a good club culture. I think people really give a lot to their clubs, and there's a lot of inter club rivalry and stuff like that. I know it's been well documented, but um, yeah, it's just a, there seems to be particularly strong clubs for whatever reason. Is that a good thing? Uh, good and bad. Like there's probably in the past people have said Galway it's sort of been at the negative for Galway in advance in terms of like the interclub rivalry and stuff like that. But I think it can only be a good thing at the end of the day when you have strong competition at a club level um, and feeding into Galway in recent years it's brought us on in both Harden and Camogie. So yeah. Do you think it's a disadvantage that you <coughs> are you don't have that kind of same provincial challenge that the other clubs would have in theirs? Um probably is, but when you're I don't think it's a, a disadvantage for us personally. Uh, I think we're at a level maybe for example it gives the hurling teams an easy passage or the camogie to, to the All Ireland final. But I think for us, given that Galway is so competitive, that you have like you're tested all along the way, and then in the semi final, it's always so tough. I don't think we're not. We're not we're not weak, you know. If I, for example, like when we were coming up against the Munster, the Leinster teams were well able for them, and yeah, we've won the last two whenever we've been well three now when we've been there. So yeah, I think it works. But ideally, yeah, you'd love a kind of championship, but that's not coming like anytime soon. <laughs> so how do you stay like in that time? How do you stay competitive and fresh yeah. and kind of still have that edge? Yeah. So we usually take a few weeks off. Um, after the club championship final and then go back training say the start of December and train hard, uh, gym, physical training and then we play a lot of club challenges against say for example we played UL a number of times this year um, before Christmas and after Christmas and we play inter-county teams come back pre-season training so they're really good challenges and um, so yeah you'd be definitely prepared when you're playing them every weekend so. Yeah. And I'd say your house is quite competitive anyway and yeah. everyone is kept on their toes. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's great. Um, six girls and we all sort of are involved in some shape or form. Um, Mum and dad as well. So, yeah, it's all go. <laughs> so tell me about what life is like for you, like six of you, all, as you said, involved in some make, shape or form. Yeah. What's home life like? Um, Busy, like... um. I live in Dublin and my sister Clola lives, she's a teacher in Kilcullen and she's living in Newbridge and then Orla is a teacher, she's teaching PE and Irish in Canberra so she's at home and Siobhan's in college so like a lot of us aren't really at home anymore, it's just um, we call them the two small ones, Kira and Isha and they're 14 and 12 so they're at home with mum and dad and Orla so yeah but when we're home then at the weekends it's all just go go up early, training, training, going to matches and yeah you don't really see each other often but you're just always up going somewhere or going to some match or training but yeah it's enjoyable your mum and dad must be flat out yeah they love it sure they they'd have it no other way they're always off somewhere and yeah it's just busy and i don't think they realize how much they do but they love it and i know no difference so it's great yeah and having a famous dad um <laughs> hopping around does that bring pressure uh no not really like i mean it's 30 something years ago now at this stage so you won't like me saying that but um no he never really makes a big deal out of rant and it's just really um the love of the game and that's really the only thing that's sort of passed down through there's nothing about harking back to past generations it's just really keeping it going and always on about the next day the next challenge the next year so yeah there's no, no pressure no i don't think so and what's it like when he's your manager um, well, I know no different because he's been over me since I was like 10. 
or no sorry about seven or eight took over our under tens and been with my say age group ever since and then he'd been over all the minors and everything all up along so he's over the seniors the past seven or eight years now so I think um so like we don't know any different all the girls he's been their manager since I don't know what age so yeah what kind of manager is he uh very fair like um very passionate like enthusiastic um wouldn't be one of those to be overly calm at times but it's brilliant like because you really feel and it really like comes through how much he loves it um but he's very fair and he treats us all the same and yeah it's just really really good but he has a great management team around him as well Kevin Ward, John Noon and Olive Costello. Olive actually was full back for Galway when they won 96 so she's like a great uh, female role model in the club to have and she knows exactly the ins and outs of everything as well so they're good people to bounce off. Does um, he take it home? Uh, no, and uh, well, actually, yeah, <laughs> post match analysis, but it'd all be constructive criticism. Um, at times, you'd be like, "Oh God, I don't want to talk about it or anything like that." But um, it's all good. Like, I mean, he he's only doing it for your good, and he'd never give out to unless it was warranted or something like that. So, yeah, it's grand. <laughs> so, how many of you are playing now? Uh, there's four on the team, and then Kieran and Cher only fourteen and twelve. So they're uh, water girls. They're. <laughs> sort of dragged along to do that so yeah that's the four of us on the team and what about your mum uh she's always been involved in administrative stuff uh, all through like since I was I can't remember her not going to meetings and stuff like that and matches and they were down to Ashburn there for Siobhan at the weekend so she was gone all day Saturday and Sunday and loving it like and yeah she played as well herself for she was a hockey player yeah she played for uh Ireland in before I like I don't I never remember her playing or anything but she played winger yeah and then obviously we she had all about so that's her <laughs> yeah but she uh yeah she still played with Greenfields when I was small I remember her dragging us to matches I remember we were down in Sligo and up in Dublin and everything she'd bring us in the car and we'd be watching her playing so yeah it was great to have someone playing sport as in a female not just dad like um and we'd be watching her playing for the juniors because we were juniors when I started out like um, Sarsfields. So they won a junior in, I don't know what year, 2003 or four. I could be wrong, but I remember watching it and I was like small. So yeah, they were great role models. Yeah, so up. it's been a great rise for the Camogie club. Yeah, about. yeah, it's definitely been, we went in like, we weren't sure ever uh, anyways overly strong or anything Sarsfields or had any sort of tradition in Camogie being senior or in, like anything like that, like in comparison to Pierce's or Molière or any of those. So we really built it from the ground up in uh, underage. Um, I think this year they won like their sixth minors in a row and the year before it was fifth under 16s in a row. So it literally is all sort of grown. Um, from the bottom up and even now like we're still we, we're always sort of conscious of like the under 10 team has to be good you know like you'd be worried if you had a bad under 10 under 12 team you're like it has to because you know when you neglect it then they'll be given out in 10 years or like you know you'll all be disappointed like saying oh we let that go or yeah so that's really it's just all about the underage so you're living in Dublin and then obviously you must commute quite a bit then yeah yeah there's two other girls in college so um every Wednesday we head home um wherever Tonight now we're in AIT because it's the only place we can get a pitch with lights um, in sort of, you know, Galway isn't well known for its uh, facilities. So, yeah, heading there this evening and then home again Friday and then training Saturday, Sunday. So, yeah, and up again then Sunday night. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know any other way and I really love it. Like, so I'll have enough time to be lying down when I'm retired. So, <laughs> yeah. And what about the Galway senior team? Um, yeah, uh, so I stepped away after the league this year myself, um, just personal decision, um, but um, I'm back in and out this year um, uh, with Orla and Siobhan, my two sisters, so yeah, um, as soon as the club is over we'll probably take whatever week or two off because it's on now at the minute like in the finals fix for the 22nd of March I think, so like there's no rest for the wicket, but yeah, there's a great setup, and obviously it was such a great year last year and um, I don't see why uh, that can't be replicated again this year, like, because um, the underage is particularly strong. Um, the minors actually have Caroline Murray over them this year. And Molly Joan does like a real female presence this year in Galway in the underage. It's great to see like ex players coming back, and I know myself from the club girls involved uh, on the Saracens team. They just have like great things to say about them, how professional it is, and everything. So yeah. Was it difficult to miss last year? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. But as I said, it was my own decision. So like, yeah, it was difficult. But hopefully, um, 
the club and stuff will make up for it and you know I have a few more years left in me hopefully of course so, you're still so young yeah yeah well <laughs> I wouldn't see the years don't be quick or do be quick going by when you're yeah but yeah hopefully now so what did you learn now from the two final defeats um we were very very young the first year we weren't ready I didn't think um even now we're still young like we have three 16 year olds on the team like um there's 17, 18 year olds, they're a very, the average age is like 20, 21 I think, but the first year I think it hit us when we went out in Crow Park, the pace of Slough Neal, their athleticism, everything, we just weren't ready, I don't I don't think, even though we only lost by two points in the end, but just you know yourself deep down, like we didn't really deserve to win. And then 2018, I suppose, it was called off twice because of the weather and the storm and we got injuries the week before the match. My sister pulled her groin in the warm up. I did my back the week before, so it was like it wasn't meant to be. But yeah, like that's no nothing. Like Snock Neil were just a brilliant team on both days, and they deservedly won. But we have matured a good bit now, and we've done a lot more like strength and conditioning and fitness work. And like our hurling was always there. It was just really getting it down to the fitness and the strength and stuff like that. And tactically, I think we're more aware now as well. So. All we can do is go out and give it our best now on the first and hopefully it'll pay dividends this time around. What yeah. kind of a challenge do you think they're going to pose? Um, like a massive challenge. They're just such a brilliant team and I think it's only what they've done for Ulster Camogie because people sort of brushed it aside in the past, you know, didn't really give it much thought. Uh, but now you see the likes of Shannon Graham and all the Cassidy's. Like they're just, they're as good as any player from, if not better, than any player from Galway or Cork or you know, Kilkenny. And you don't see it only once a year, which is a pity really. But um, yeah, there's just an unbelievable team and an unbelievable club. I know it's well documented. Um, it will be a massive challenge, but all we can do is focus on ourselves, which we have been doing. And hopefully now we'll perform. That's the main thing. <laughs> And yeah. just finally, the new rules, what are your thoughts? Um, positive, yeah, it's brilliant. Like I've seen it all along. Um, Camogie and Harden are the same game, so why can't be? The, why can't they be the same rules? And for the same way, why can't they be the one organisation as well? Like you know, we're all the same people. We all have brothers. Well, I don't have any brothers, but um, <laughs> you know, um, you know, people, we're all the same community. So once they amalgamate all the organisations, amalgamate the rules should be the same. You know, the penalty is like so basic. I think the. The free could be the only potential like one that mightn't carry through the free from the backs if you get fouled. It's a bit too, I think, innovative at this stage. But um, it's great to see that they're thinking ahead. Um, yeah, it's just brilliant. The contact is absolutely brilliant. But this year in the All Ireland series, they you could see a noticeable like improvement in the quality because they were letting it flow and that's all you want and even I know myself now in the club they were letting so much more things go and it's brilliant you can just you're not afraid and it's not a match of freeze like you know because that's all it ever was for well not always but you're just so frustrated because you'd be just watching the match getting cold watching people take a freeze so yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And just in your time or in the near future, do you think we'll get to a stage where all of the associations are under the one umbrella? I think so, yeah. I think that's what the sort of sound bites are, aren't they coming out from the people that know how or the char in charge? So I hopefully like I don't see what the problem is. I don't see what the barriers to amalgamation of all associations are. I know there probably are some like little issues or whatever, but it's common sense so I don't see why not. So hopefully <laughs> Yeah. Let's stand by some more action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>